acknowledge all these participants. I do have one thing to say. In fact, um, it's a story. It's called White Rabbit. I told the group I was going to tell this story today. So they're anticipating me. And believe me, there is no white rabbit in any of your children. <laughs> you got to understand, I have a sister-in-law. She has a dog. And she lives up for 40 pound gap. She lives in Jonestown. She has this dog in the neighborhood has this white rabbit. So my sister-in-law lets the dog out, the dog gets to run, but the dog likes to go over to the neighbor's yard where the white rabbit is. The white rabbit has a cage, like around, it has like that chicken fence, so that the dog can't get to the white rabbit. Um, so, but it creates tension because the dog's always going over to get to the rabbit and the neighbor gets mad at my sister-in-law, so my sister-in-law you know, she can get hostile back and say some things. So to, to calm that, what has happened is they all contact each other so that they know when one's going away. So they can leave the one out. So the neighbor will call my sister-in-law and say, hey, I'm going away so you can leave your dog out. So they try to work it, unlike the Republican and Democratic Party, they try to work it out. So they try to work it out. So the one day, the neighbor calls my sister-in-law and says, hey, we're going away so you can let your dog out. So, my sister-in-law, she lets the dog out. She's there doing the dishes so she can see in the backyard the dog. The next thing you know, she sees the dog and the dog's playing with something. He's shaking his head back and forth, saliva flying everywhere. And it's this white thing. So she's not thinking anything of it because the neighbor called and said, I'm going away. So she's washing the dishes and she sees this dog still playing with this object. All of a sudden she's like, that looks like the white rabbit. So my sister-in-law, as quick as she can, she picks up whatever's close to her. So she grabs a book and she starts running out and she starts yelling at her dog to leave this object alone. As she's getting closer, she's seeing it. The saliva's still flying. The saliva's still all over this white rabbit. She's realizing it's the white rabbit. Yes, at this point in time, the white rabbit is lifeless. And she gets there and she shoes the dog away and the dog drops the white rabbit. So she doesn't know what to do because already, there's already tension between the two. So what she does is she picks the white rabbit up. Just down the story second. Hand. She picks the white rabbit up and she takes it into the sink in her house. And she starts washing it and cleaning it up. And then she gets all the dirt off, all the saliva off the white rabbit. And then she gets the blow dryer on And she starts blow drying this white rabbit. So now it's dry, it's clean, and now she gets her brush out. She starts combing the hair of the white rabbit. Oh yeah, you can already tell you what she's doing. So the white rabbit is coming back to life. So now she takes the white rabbit. They don't lock doors in the neighborhood up there. I lock my doors all the time in Harrisburg. Right, Mammy? Wherever she disappeared, you know. So she snuck back over into the neighbor's house, opened the cage up, and stuck the white rabbit back in the cage. And then came back over to her house and acted like nothing was going on. So later on that night, the neighbor gets home. Next thing you know, she hears this, ah! Ah! My sister-in-law, she runs out of the house acting like she doesn't know what's going on, but she does. She goes, what's going on? What's up? What's the matter? And she goes, the neighbor says to her, well, we just buried a rabbit three days ago, and it's back in the cage. So if you've ever heard me speak before, you know something else is coming after this. See, in life, a lot of times, we all get fluffed up. In fact, we got fluffed up to come to this event. Bill got his best on. We shave, we shower, we put our good clothes on, we put our makeup on to make it look like we're externally we're alive. But a lot of times, like the presenters talked about, a lot of times we're dying or we're even dead internally. So the thing is, a lot of you think you probably came here today for the fun. It was fun for everybody that wasn't serving and me. You probably thought you came here for the food. The food
food was great. I mean, that cake's almost all. The brownies are almost all. The lemon, everything, the chili was really good. You probably came here and thought you came here for the fellowship. You might even thought you came here today to hear those four great speakers and hear about those four great causes and the wonderful work they're doing in the community. But I really believe that you came here for another reason. And that's to remember to always be kind. That's to always remember that you're still alive today. And you still got good to do. You see, the thing is, this weekend is fast approaching. And it has great importance and it has great significance. And there's going to be a time in each one of our lives that we fall down really hard and we don't want to get back up. But I expect everybody in this room always to get back up. Always to fluff up, always to show up, always to dress up, and to never, ever give up. And there's one other thing that I expect this group to do. And that's to remember the story of the white rabbit that was told today. That was buried, and in three days, he rose. 